All right, so today we are going to go through uh, one of the workflows that you can use for when doing a digital wax up in InLab. Now, what I'm showing here is just a workflow that I tend to use uh, when doing a wax up. It's not the only way to do it. Um, I've seen, you know, different versions of this uh, in my journeys with InLab, but this is one that just works best for me in my hands. Um, so in the administration, I'm just going to fill in call it crowns um, for let's say for example it's the four anterior teeth I'll keep it as anatomic and I've just noted it as prime print uh, as if I'm printing in prime print temp but you'll see in a moment what I'm actually going to do is create technically a virtually seated model at the end um, that I would 3d print the actual model to become my study model um, but this is just to show you uh, an example of how you start the administration screen um, now when it comes to the scan step if you've done something like your prime scan scan for example um normally obviously the scan step would be grayed out in in lab because you would have already done that it would have been uh included uh obviously in your um you know ds core for example if you're going to uh to open that up in ds core um and then open into in lab however what i wanted to do here is i essentially want a copy file of my upper jaw in this case uh, so I didn't take that on prime scan. So if you're doing this in prime scan, I recommend just duplicate your uh, working arch so that you can have basically two copies of it uh, when we're doing the actual wax up and you'll you'll see why in a moment. Um, so what I'm going to do here is for my upper jaw, because um, I just basically want to duplicate the exact same thing. So I'm going to just basically drag and drop. Oh, sorry. Actually, I don't have to add a copy first. I'm going to say copy upper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop this over copy. It's going to say, do you want to copy or move this? I'm just going to say copy. So I'm basically just duplicating my upper jaw twice um, for obviously being able to have a duplicate, which will make sense in just a moment. OK, so now we're going to move forward into the model step here. Um, now, this scan here is not ideal. Um, we can see here that it's cut out. Um, I don't think I can necessarily fix that in the scan. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to carry on here. So at this point in time, for my working arch, what I want to do is I want to use the cut and replace tool. So I'm going to use the cut tool first. And I'm basically going to trim away those anterior four teeth initially. And the reason I'm doing this is because I essentially want to create space for where my wax up is going to be, right? If I tried to design, you know, crowns on top of these prepless teeth, you'll find that I'll have a really hard time with um, obviously actually creating like the embrasure space and contact space and things like that. So what I'm going to do instead is now that I've got kind of these holes here, I'm going to now use the replace tool and I'm basically going to go around kind of each area here. And now fill this in with kind of that virtual stone. OK, now this is the reason that I like this workflow, because I'm now creating that actual space where, you know, I can create the contact. I can create more of that emergence look. If I just try to design right on top of the teeth, you, you get kind of some funky looking wax up sometimes, I find, because obviously InLab is thinking it's just designing on top of those teeth without preps. And thinking that is kind of the prep, right? So at least this, I now give space to the software to actually be able to properly design, you know, certain elements. Now I just use the cut tool initially just because I find it's easier if I'm just kind of instantly creating that space for where I'm going to cut. Now see, this is where you can see, obviously it's not ideal to <laughs> cut that part out, but it's kind of missing in the scan. So I don't have much of a choice here. All right, now you want your line to be as smooth as possible. So for example, this, it would give me an error if I, if I tried that. So I'm just going to put this here. All right, perfect. So I've got my line all around. I'm going to hit apply. And it's essentially going to create almost like a prepless area. OK. All right. So you can see here now I've got basically like nothing there, right? So I can now see, okay, I've got space to actually create wax ups now for those four interior teeth. Now from here, steps along the bottom are, are all still the same, right? So 
I don't really need to do anything with check occlusion or anything like that. It's just showing me the patient's bite scan. But now with set model access, because we did a duplicate copy, we can now see, I can see where the midline is. I can see where the, um, you know, canine is, the occlusal plane, that sort of thing. So I line this up like I normally would, right? But at least I have the bio copy to kind of, you know, just justify kind of where the teeth are lined up. So now set draw line again, same thing. I just make sure that obviously the teeth noted are right above where I'm actually working. So I'm in Canada, so I've got this tooth numbering system. If you're in the US, obviously different tooth numbering system, but again, same idea. So I'm gonna move these dots here in relation to the jaw. I tend to err more on like kind of like the center fossa area. I've seen people sometimes do more like, you know, buckly or things like that. Like, I don't think it really makes too much of a difference here. Where it can make more of a difference is honestly when you're doing dentures, but we won't worry too much about that. Um, so then the draw margin, now actually, I'm going to go back because I like to trim, I like to undo the auto trim. I personally like to see my full arch for each tooth. I just find it's easier when I'm doing a wax up. Same thing, last one here. And now I'll do draw margin. So now with the draw margin, the reason why I wanted to use the bio copy before, and I wanted to duplicate that upper jaw in this particular case, is I wanna be able to turn on my uh, copy upper, just make it more translucent, because now I know where the margins of the teeth will be, right? So I might not be keeping the anatomy of these teeth, but I do wanna keep relatively the actual kind of anatomy of where like the margin would line up, where like the tissue and the tooth, you know, kind of meet. So I'm gonna change my margin now to manual. And I'm basically just going to go through each tooth here. And now the biggest thing you want to make sure of is that these margin lines don't intersect with each other. OK, so when you get to kind of the contact area, we don't want any of them intersecting. OK, so that's the main advice I will give you per tooth. I don't know if I want to tip this way here. I want to fix this area a little bit. I can easily fix that. All right, now moving on to the one one. Same thing. So I want to change this to manual. Create my margin line, and again, just making sure that those lines don't intersect with each other in the contact region. And you'll just duplicate this for the next few teeth. All right, now when we're doing the set insertion access, really you want to set it like set up the model as if you're setting up all four, right? So for example, if I'm looking at kind of like the one one here, for example, I'll do that as step one, prefer one of the centers if I can. I'll line this up, I'll hit apply view direction, and it's going to move that arrow for me. At this point, when I do each um, tooth now, I'm not going to change my model, right? I'm going to keep my model where it is because I want the draw to be relatively the same for all four. So I'm keeping it ideally set up for all four, okay? Now, when we move forward to the design step, obviously from a parameter perspective, you know, there really isn't a need for, you know, minimal radial thickness, minimal occlusal thickness, um, margin thickness, like that sort of thing, because we don't really have obviously an actual tooth here, right? Like we don't have an actual prep. So if you need to bring these things down a little bit, that's totally okay, right? Like we can, we can absolutely do that. Things like the proximal contact strength, occlusal contact strength dynamic, I usually leave it um, for, you know, kind of all of them simply because 
obviously, um, you know, we want proper contacts here to be kind of considered and things like that. But things like the radial thickness and occlusal thickness, because we're not physically manufacturing these teeth, I'm not too, too worried about these in particular. Now, I'm going to go to edit element here and we're going to edit the proposal that we get. All right, so here, obviously there's things that I can change and things like that easily, right? But I do want to point out a couple things. In adjust morphology, we have it defaulted to, you know, kind of the biogeneric, right? So what that means is obviously it's going to stick to, you know, kind of just the best fit proposal that it thinks. However, because it's the anterior teeth, if I want to maybe say, okay, I want these teeth to be more oval or I want them to be more squared or I want them to be more tapered, I can easily change these things here, right? So maybe I want to go more with like an oval look. It is very easy for me to do that here, right? So I can easily choose kind of a quick tooth form and then obviously have the design kind of propose it that way, right? Or if I want to have it initially proposed in biogeneric, play around with that, obviously I can, right? It's it's you're now at this point designing it the exact same way that you would a regular anterior crown. The only difference is obviously, you know, when you're doing regular and ant anterior teeth, when adjacent teeth are surrounding it, obviously you're, you're probably trying to match it more aligned with what the patient has. Whereas for a wax up, maybe you're trying to give them something that they don't have because, you know, they want a new smile, that kind of thing. So you have room to kind of play around with it, obviously with that uh, adjust morphology option. All right, so we can see the teeth here. Obviously, I can make any adjustments that I see fit. But again, let's say for all extent purposes, again, you've got your form tool where you can add material, smooth material, remove material. You've got your move and rotate where your move also has the scale option. You've got your usual shape tool, which is anatomical or individual. You can recalculate. Um, you can do a cutback if you wanted. However, not really needed in this particular case. Um, and then obviously things like incisal variation. If we wanted to basically say, okay, you know, all four teeth, we want to highlight and I want to, you know, add some more kind of definition to the facial aspect of these teeth, I can kind of go through the variations. And as you can see, I'm adding kind of more depth to the, the facial aspect of these teeth. Again, I can go far more into detail in regards to the design of these. But again, if you can design an interior crown, you can design a wax up. The main part of the wax up that I wanted to show you was obviously, you know, how do we get those proper embrasure spaces? spaces and that's really by, again, using that biocopy function, whether you're importing an STL, just duplicate the jaw that you're working on, or physically on your scanner, if you are using something like PrimeScan, for example, just quickly duplicate it before you send it up to DS Core um, so that you have that copy file when you're bringing it into InLab if you're designing here. OK, now what we want to do here is even though we're not actually exporting these to mill, we need to take this to the export phase. We need to basically tell the software, OK, we've gotten this to the final phase. Soon as we do that now, we're going to head back to administration. And the reason we're going to head back to administration is we're going to do what's known as virtually seeding the case. So you can see right now under case details, we've got virtual seeding layer one of one because there's only one layer. There's the wax up and that's it. Now, if you hover over to just the right of layer one of one, you'll see the option that says insert all. So I'm going to hit insert all. Now it says, should instrument geometry be considered? I don't need to worry about instrument geometry because we're not actually milling these teeth, right? So instrument geometry, meaning, you know, should it consider the intaglio surface where the burrs have physically milled the case? But in this case, we didn't actually mill it. So I'm going to say no. If you physically milled, you know, this as like a temp or something like that, obviously, yes, you'd want to say yes in this point, but I'm going to say no because I'm not physically milling it. But now, as soon as I've done this, I'm going to show you what happens here. All right, so now you can see these little squares kind of above the four teeth, and you can see virtual seating. There's now layer two of two. So if I look at this drop down menu, I can toggle between layer one and, uh, and two. But obviously, you can see scan has been grayed out now. But in the model phase now, if I move forward, this is where I could physically 3D print this model now, whether it's with prime print or, um, you know, a different. 3D printer or third party printer with my STL, you can now see, okay, I've got my wax up here. Okay, so this these four teeth now represent my wax up. So at this point in time, I could send this over to InLab Model Builder, design it, send it for 3D printing. Okay, so that's the workflow for the wax up. Again, this is just the workflow that I personally think works best in my hands. 
by no means do I think that this is the only way to do it, um, but it's certainly a, a quick way to do it. Um, if you're looking at just like a few anterior teeth, especially um, to basically be able to just cut out the teeth, use that biocopy to get roughly where your margins should be. And then, of course, that virtual seating tool in the administration makes it really nice to kind of just move forward uh, to be able to 3D print this. And then at that point, if you want to do like an Essex suck down, fill that with composite or use that for a template for, you know, uh, traditional uh, temporary crown material to superimpose that into the patient's mouth. You can do that, but it's a nice way to do it without actually having to prep the patient's teeth with the software that you're given with PrimePrint. So this has been the workflow for digital wax ups. Hope this helps.